So we covered yesterday how CNN viewers and liberal Twitter lost their mind because Maggie Haberman had the audacity to say on CNN that Joe Biden is a flawed candidate. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is caused these viewers, like I'm truly learning now how these CNN and MSNBC viewers have just been gaslit into thinking that any sort of airing of any of the other side is just completely not acceptable. So this happened yesterday. So Chuck Todd has Mick Mulvaney, former White House chief of staff, on his show. It's Meet the Press. You were supposed to interview people who are powerful. Let's take a listen. Look, I, I think if there's... If you look back at those comments the president made when he was running for office, I think what the president didn't know was Washington, D.C. And hiring good business people is one thing. People in Washington, D.C. are different. And he learned the hard way with John Bolton. I think I give president credit for this. He was not afraid to hire people that he knew would disagree with him. It's one of the reasons he hired me to run the Office of Management and Budget, because he knew I was more fiscally conservative than he was. He welcomed that. He welcomed that difference of opinion. OK, standard issue, spin, whatever. You see it on cable all the time. Yeah. Well, for that audacity uh, for uh, bringing on Mick Mulvaney, Chuck Todd's name was trending all over, and people were like outraged that that I mean that it was just eight thousand whenever we screenshot it, but it was actually a lot more. You even saw these backlash. Let's throw up one of the tweets. This is one of the the highest ones that we saw, and people were like, you can see this. They're like, hey, throw out Chuck Todd, bring in and hire Smith. Shep Smith. Hire Shep Smith. <laughs> it said, why both sides do you need to know to nominate Chuck? It's like, what is also, what? hilarious? I love watching Nicole Wallace. Yeah, the resistance hero Nicole Wallace. I mean, oh my God, it's hilarious. It's crazy. And I don't think anyone's gonna accuse this of being Chuck Todd apologist here. No, yeah, but I'm not a fan of Chuck Todd. <laughs> they were, uh, they yeah. were not nearly as upset, these, this particular set of Twitter users, when he, you know, compared Bernie Sanders supporters to basically Nazis and his, you know, that, that... Was that him? Yeah, that was him. It. He did yeah. that whole thing, too. Yeah, there was less upset over that yeah. than the fact that he interviewed someone who was in a position of power within the administration. And, look, just so you know my thinking on this, yeah. Because sometimes I do, we, you know, we have a really broad range of mm -hmm. ideologies that we bring on uh, this show. And uh, what I always think is if you have someone who is in or has been in a position of power, you engage with them. Even if, like, even if you think that they're beyond the pale or whatever, like, if you have been at the heart of American power, that is a person that you have a responsibility to question, to try to hold accountable, to engage with, rather than just, like, pretending that they don't exist or not platforming them. I just think that that's a ridiculous way of approaching yeah. things. He's the former White House chief of staff, direct, who was under and supervised John Bolton. Isn't that somebody that cable news should be interviewing? Like, so the most obvious thing yeah. that I've ever seen, and their viewers cannot take it. I it think that is something, the greatest disservice they have yeah. done is create and cultivate an audience that wants to hear nothing from the so other fragile. side. So fragile. And fragile. Yeah. That is dangerous. And act, what are they going to do under Biden it's also if, they, like, if he wins? What are you afraid of? Yeah. Like, if your arguments are better than the other side, then, like, make your argument. I mean, I'm not afraid of the talking points of the Trump administration. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty weak spin. It's totally weak. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, what is so terrifying yeah. about actually, no, our arguments are better, so let's just have that debate and make that argument rather than freaking out that the person is even allowed to give an interview. It also reminds me of, um, remember Chris Hayes covered the Tara Reid yes, allegations? He was yes. the first one right. on MSNBC to do it. And he did it in this very, like, you know, very careful way. And this was after a lot of evidence had, had emerged that had backed her up, witness corroborating, mm -hmm. you know, witnesses and accounts, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, he fired Chris Hayes, trended on Twitter because he dared to even mention that this story was out there. That's and deranged. of course, you know, and yeah. look, it, I guess it'd be one thing if that was the treatment for all allegations of sexual assault. But of course, it wasn't right. Of course, when it's sexual assault allegations against someone that is on the other team, right. those they want to focus on. And, and like you said, ultimately, Ultimately, it doesn't do anyone a service to live in this little narrow ideological bubble where you're not allowed to let any other views penetrate mm -hmm. whatsoever. And I think, look, again, I think it looks really weak that you it don't think weak. your arguments are better, that you can win and debate and be able to best that person and you have to just pretend they don't exist. I think it's kind of yeah. sad. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. All right. We'll have more rousing for you after this.